What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Star Wars Explained. We had a chance to speak with E.K. Johnson at San Diego Comic-Con about Crimson <laughs> Climb uh, before the book came out. Now I've read it, so we can talk spoilers. We can. <laughs> so there will be spoilers for Crimson Climb in this interview. Just fair warning. Uh, this will come out after yep. the book, <laughs> obviously. But uh, first of all, really enjoyed the book. Thank you. It made me immediately want to watch Solo. <laughs> <laughs> that was the goal, really. And it gave me a whole new perspective on Kira like I, I felt like I already knew her from the movie but I saw her in a whole different light and I was like yeah I want to watch Solo with this new understanding so uh, first of all now that you've written both what's more fun to write light side or dark side definitely dark side <laughs> like I'm always like oh everyone is nice to each other and makes good decisions and then this time I got to be like murder it was awesome now I know what Delilah's on about all the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're gonna join her with the maybe not quite as like maybe not quite her to her level but every time I, when I was writing this book every time I was like mm, is this too much I would be like what would Delilah do and then do that well, that's definitely just <laughs> the vibe I got from the book was that I, I felt like you were having a lot of fun writing it, uh, doing something a little different from Ahsoka and the Padme books. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what was it like to balance the darker tendencies of Kira and showing that side of her character while also keeping her relatable? I think the thing that makes her relatable is that she just wants to survive. She has a very like good sort of ability to stay alive. And sometimes that does mean she makes good and also nice decisions. Um, so every once in a while you can kind of like throw her a bone and then, or she throws someone else a bone and you know, like, oh good, this person lived because she needed them to fly the ship or something like that. So it's never like entirely good, but sometimes uh, you get someone who's like a little bit uh, slightly redemptive. Um, and I think the thing that does make her relatable is that she she does just want to make it out or through or over or something. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times, um, even if she's doing things that aren't like fantastic, they're still completely understandable. Yeah, just that that drive to survive. And I found it so heartbreaking to now watch that scene in Solo where her and Han are split apart yeah. and their paths diverge forever. Uh, if she had made it, through the gate with him, how do you think their lives would have gone? Oh man, <laughs> um, I don't think it would have been like great. <laughs> um, I because I don't think she would have uh, you know thought to enlist in the Imperial Academy or any of the stuff that Han sort of immediately ran headfirst into. Um, and so I think one of the elements to come back to in the book over and over again was her being like, we had no plan. Like, that was so dumb. Why were we even trying that? And she realizes that, you know, going forward, she's going to have to do better. Um, whether it's her and someone else or preferably just her, because she's never going to sort of be in that position again where she doesn't have plans like B through F that she can fall back on if required. I really liked that. I don't know if it if resentment is the right word, but maybe it is that she feels towards Han, like she still has fond feelings for him, but she's like, the fact that he had no plan, he made it and I didn't like, and I mean, Han is kind of the epitome of just failing upward oh, in Star Wars, so like just charging into everything with no plan and it works out for him, but it didn't for her. No, and I think that's one of the most interesting things about her characters in that moment, you know, any idealism she had left, which was not a lot, at that point is just completely gone um, because, and it is, it is resentment. Resentment's a good word okay. and it's, it's very complicated and complex, but it's definitely not sort of the feelings we as fans are used to having for Han. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was kind of interesting to write like a different perspective on how his shenanigans affect people <laughs> instead of just being like, oh yeah, sure, everything's fine. And then you're like, wait, it must have really sucked to have had to leave Cloud City in a hurry because Han Solo showed up and like ruined your life <laughs> without meaning to, like all that kind of stuff. So um, it just kind of, while writing the storybook here, it does kind of like let me make other characters that in some cases aren't even in the book more complex as well, which is always fun. Yeah, and uh, I, I just loved, again, watching the movie with all of that in my head now of just you, Kira is seen through Han's eyes in the movie and to know everything that happened to her uh, throughout was just so much fun gave me a whole new perspective uh, did you high five yourself when you thought of the origin story for her tattoo because that was sick 
<laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> so um, it was one of those like amazing stories where uh, Jen, my editor, had come back and been like, oh, could you maybe like include a scene where she gets her tattoo? And I was like, sure. And then I was writing the scene and I was like, I need an alien. So I did what I always do when I need an alien. And I went to Wikipedia and just Googled like alien and like looked something <laughs> up and then picked that one. And then I was like, oh, no. And the note from Jen was like, thanks. <laughs> I was like, you're welcome. <laughs> So so did you pick corn at first? Uh, no, I totally didn't. So I, I picked it and then I got, because I usually, like, I always pick aliens at random, which usually comes back to, like, be a bad thing. But in this case, worked out pretty well. And then when I realized, I'm like, wait, this, they squirt ink as a defense mechanism. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, well, there's the tattoo. <laughs> so it got sort of um fairly fairly direct after that but it was definitely like a subconscious decision that resulted in one of the coolest scenes i've ever written yeah it's so cool <laughs> like it's so purely star wars and something that can only really exist in star wars and it, it but it also feels very like born ultimatum or yeah. james bond <laughs> just a little bit uh which also directly connects to mer lafferty's novelization of solo which you mentioned in our previous interview uh going through and connecting all those dots uh, did you have any other moments of connectivity from collaboration with other stories that really stood out to you? Um, I think the one that's kind of like the weirdest detail was um, reading Daniel Jose Older's High Republic book that was set on Corellia, mm-hmm. Dark Horizon uh, Midnight or something. Horizon, Midnight yeah. Horizon. The, the part of phase two, the part of phase one where everything is dark something or other. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, so getting his kind of take on Corellia, I was like, oh, I'm just going to like make some notes about geography while I'm reading this. And then Proximo was actually in it. And I was like, and now we have a pitch. So mm-hmm. it was it was kind of fun to like take those little bits and pieces. Um, but I also really liked um, Working Off of Most Wanted by Ray Carson. Um, because it gives you a pretty succinct list of like Kira's mistakes mm. during that event and the fact that she's not going to repeat any of them if she can possibly help it um, gave me some sort of space to like push her character a little bit further. Yeah. Uh, I have a question that I'm wondering if this is a piece of connectivity for your other works and I really like it if it is. There was a mention of uh, when she was chipped that tracking technology has developed to a point <laughs> where yeah. I'm, I'm gonna push me skywalker in every book they let me so um as soon as i added that scene i was like mm, what if i just change that again and no one can stop me <laughs> they probably won't anyway and then they didn't so yes 100 percent on purpose well yeah um, that's that's a great bit and for people who maybe haven't read queen's hope just the the idea that shmi was working on the device that anakin wanted to make yeah. to find his own chip and now it's being like mass produced on a anti-slavery black market or something yeah. that's that's so good <laughs> i i had some fun with that sabe's been very busy since queen's hope <laughs> uh at the end of the book kira goes inside a mysterious temple and you describe the way it's built is it built out of lego bricks 100 percent built out of lego bricks <laughs> i love star wars lego extremely fondly like it's so much fun um it's like my favorite way to watch star wars sometimes because it's just like everything i love about having fun and having like a good time um lego palpatine and lego darth maul are just like exquisite they're so funny um and so when i was like i'm gonna write an indiana jones murder temple and then i was like in lego because i can i guess um so i i got to write sort of a jedi who is capable of being a master builder um and uh putting all that stuff together and it was it was very fun it's actually based on um an actual lego pyramid um which i was deeply fascinated by because when the egyptians built the pyramid they built it solid and then cut the shafts Mm. in but when the lego people do it they have to make the shafts the right shape and then cut out or build out to make the rest of the pyramid um so that it's pyramid by the time they get to the end and so there's actually discussion about that in the in the book about how they would have done it in one order um and it's because the egyptians did it one way and then the lego people did it the other and the creativity in lego design is just like mind-boggling to me all the time it it was just one of those like i'm reading it and they described how the bricks look and i was like oh interesting and then a little (laughs) bit later it said something like not even a master builder could do this i was like well hold on yeah Yeah. (laughs) it felt very uh baby shark yes it was was a a little baby shark uh, like this fun little if you're paying attention you're like hold on uh well that's all our time uh thank you so much for taking some time out of your con schedule to speak with us no problem it was fun uh crimson climb is out right now so go check it out it's a lot of fun